Now that Donald Trump has won the presidential election, how will that impact our U.S. housing market? In today's video, we're going to talk about that based on an article from CNBC, but also a reaction from Housing Wire and the National Association of Home Builders. I have a lot to share in today's video. Let's begin. According to this article from CNBC, it says Donald Trump's victory spurred a rise in the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield. Mortgage rates are loosely tied to this benchmark yield. The average rate on the, for a 30-year fixed rate um, surged nine basis points on Wednesday, which is today, the day after our elect elections, to 7.13% according to the Mortgage News Daily. That's the highest rate since July 1st this year, though not quite as bad as a surge we were expecting. So just sharing an update regarding that, the Treasury yield, this is the 10 year, by the way, is at 4.416%, an increase of around 13 basis points from yesterday. But last night and to start um, today, which is on Wednesday again, uh, it increased um, over 17 basis points. Now we're only up by 13 basis points. And this is uh, pretty bad for rates. Let me just refresh this, make sure we have the most recent uh, rates. There we have. The Mortgage News Daily, they basically surveyed lenders across the country, asking them, what is your average rate for these certain criteria? Anyways, according to them, this is not an offer to lend, by the way. According to them, that rate is at 7.13%, an increase of nine basis points compared to Tuesday. Jumbo were at 7.25%, FHA and VA loans is around 6.6%. Now, looking at the rate one year ago, you know, even though rates have increased greatly, over the past couple of months. Uh, so at 7.13%, this is actually lower than one year ago. One year ago, we're at 7.48%. So rates have decreased by about 35 basis points compared to 12 months ago. However, though, at 7.13%, this is actually tied to the highest levels going back to July 1st this year. So just taking a step back here, about two months ago, we we're at one and a half year lows. Now we're basically at a four month high regarding average rates. And that's looking at data from the Mortgage News Daily. Getting back to this article from CNBC, uh, Matthew Graham, who's a chief operating officer of the uh, Mortgage News Daily said, the expectation among bond traders coming into the election was that rates would move higher in the event of a Trump victory and especially a red sweep. So speaking of that, uh, a red sweep means that the Republicans control the White House, the Senate, and the House. Therefore, they control the White House and also Congress. So for the Senate, um, this, by the way, is updated as of 1049 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday. And Republicans gained three seats. Therefore, Democrats lost control of the Senate. And let's look at the House. That is uh, uh, too close to call. So uh, they gained one seat for the Republicans and the Democrats lost one seat. So big picture, if there is a red sweep in which Republicans are have control of the White House and also Congress, it could be easier for um, President-elect Donald Trump to enact or uh, get approved other measures. And one of the things he talks about is raising tariffs and also doing tax cuts. So potentially a rise of tariffs could cause a rise in prices that consumers pay in the United States. And of course, if prices increase, inflation could increase further, which is exactly the opposite of what the Fed wants to see, which could curb further uh, decreases of the federal funds rate. I'll go over that more in detail here in a little bit. Also, home builder stock have actually been going down today as well. Lennar is down by 5%. Uh, DR Horton is down by nearly 5%. Pilty Group Incorporated is down by 3.64%. And on top of that, Home Depot is down by 3% and Lowe's is down by 3.65%. According to John Burns, who's the CEO of John Burns Real Estate Consulting, said the builder stocks are highly sensitive to mortgage rates and mortgage rate expectations. Inflation expectations are higher now, which impacts long-term rates. So here's my take on that. Trump has uh, said he wants to cut uh, taxes and raise tariffs. The latter, increasing tariffs, raises prices for consumers that we pay, which could increase inflation, like I mentioned. Rising inflation is not a good environment for Fed rate cuts, right? 
Additionally, existing home sales are even more sensitive to mortgage rate fluctuations. And on top of that, you are at very low levels of existing home sales. And you know, this is not accounting for the fact that rates have increased greatly over the past couple of days, which could make um, sales of existing houses even worse than they are right now. So taking a step back here, you know, rising rates of obviously is bad for the housing sector as a whole, but home builders have a better advantage over uh, the market because they can offer a lower rate, offer free builder incentives or a closing cost credit. Um, so for example, if you just go on to, here's an exercise for you guys. No matter where you're located, just go on to you know, Google and actually search for home builder incentives or home builder finance incentives and you'll find probably um, builders that are offering a 30 year fixed rate at a lower rate, a much lower rate than today's rates. That is all these incentives that home builders are offering in order to drive home sales. So his quote saying that builder stocks are highly sensitive to um, uh, fluctuations in rates, I would say also existing home sales are actually even more sensitive because those are um, uh, more impacted by um, everyday home buyers looking to buy an older house compared to a brand new one. Getting back to this article, it says the National Association of Home Builders congratulated the president-elect with a statement from its chairman. He said, the Builders Association looks forward to working with the incoming Trump administration and leaders in Congress from both parties to enact a pro-housing agenda that increases the housing supply and eases the nation's affordability woes. So I did some digging for you guys and found a statement from that association regarding the results of their election. It says, meanwhile, the battle for the House majority is going down to the wire with scores of races still to be called. Regardless of which party wins the House, there is a general consensus on both sides of the political aisle to take concrete steps to address the nation's housing affordability crisis. I would absolutely agree with him regarding this. You don't need to be a Republican or a Democrat to agree that we need to have an improvement regarding housing affordability. It should be a bipartisan issue that could be improved if we had more houses being built. If you guys want to see housing affordability improve, you want to see more supply. And if you guys want to see more supply, one source of that, of course, is from home builders. One way to not make housing affordable is to offer buyers any incentives to buy houses. This incentivizes buyers to buy houses, therefore it increases demand, and therefore it increases prices as well. So I would say if you guys want to make housing affordable, you need more supply and not to incentivize buyers to buy houses because in the long run, that just makes matters worse. It also goes on to say here that Trump said government regulations are responsible for more than 25% of the cost of a new single family home and 40% of the cost of a multifamily uh, a building. We're going to end that. Um, they didn't mention what that his plan is, but that's his quote that he uh, mentioned uh, regarding that. Uh, one thing I'll uh, add is that in Sacramento, uh, you, you guys all know I live here as, as an agent here. Um, I heard that, or I read that, um, it takes approximately $100,000 for a builder to start building a house. So prior to starting to building a house, the home builder is gonna pay approximately $100,000 in fees. So if we were to cut back these fees, maybe just maybe they build more houses, especially more affordable houses. I'm seeing a lot of builders buying house or building houses that are at the more expensive range. You know, houses over uh, $800,000 and over a million dollars in the greater Sacramento area they are not incentivized to build smaller houses because they can build a bigger house, a bigger two-story house, and sell it for a lot more money. In any case, it's a complex issue and hopefully we'll have uh, some uh, clarity regarding um, Trump's plans uh, to kind of decrease these costs of building houses. Speaking of that, let's get a reaction from Housing Wire's lead analyst, Logan Motoshami. In the short term, rates are going up. I'm skeptical of the take that we are going to get significant deficits and a big inflation push from that and tariffs. However, until there is more policy clarity, the 10-year yield will move with economic data, which has been beating estimates for the last two months. So my take on this is that we'll probably see a lot of volatility for the remainder of the week regarding rates um, as the market adjusts to um, the election results. Um, and looking forward, 
mortgage rates should move with new incoming data. In other words, new economic data. So of course, there's gonna be a lot of volatility ahead, but looking forward, let's have a look at incoming data to see which direction we're headed. One more article I wanna share with you guys is this from CNBC, just posted on Wednesday, which again is today. It says, weekly mortgage demand tanks 11% as interest rates surge higher. So something I want to kind of clarify here, I'm just kind of curious if anyone saw this article because I'm guessing a similar title to this article will be on other websites as well. So what they're doing is talking about this latest report from the NBA just posted today. It says here, this is a survey for the week ended November 1st. So when we're talking about this decrease of down by 11%, that includes refis plus purchase applications. So the MBA looks at the amount of people who are submitting loan applications to refi or to buy houses. So overall that decreased by 11%. And of course, what's a key driver of that? That is a decrease of refis. So it says here the market composite index, that's the one that includes refis plus purchases that decreased by 10.8% on a seasonally adjusted basis. However, the refi index decreased a whopping 19% from the previous week, but it still was up by 40% year over year. In addition, the seasonally adjusted purchase index, a measure of people submitting loan applications by houses, that decreased by only 5% compared to one week ago, but it was still up by 2% from the same week of 2023. According to Joe Kahn, who's the MBA's vice president and deputy chief economist, he stated the following. The 30-year fixed rate last week increased to 6.81%, the highest level since July this year. Total applications decreased for the sixth consecutive week and purchase activity falling to lowest level since mid-August this year. And refi activity declining to the lowest level since May. The average loan size on a refi applications dropped below $300,000 as borrowers with larger loans tend to be more sensitive to any given changes in mortgage rates. Meanwhile, the refi share of activity uh, was at 39.9%. This means that four out of every 10 loan applications were from a refi, pretty crazy, right? So 60% were came or coming from a uh, purchase application. Also, the share of arms or adjustable rate mortgages uh, increased to 7% of total applications. I believe the high um, from over the past, let's just say going back to uh, January of 2023, I believe that share was at uh, 12%. The low point was around 3%. So we're kind of right in the middle there at 7% of arms right now. And of course, we don't want to see that number at a high level because an adjustable rate mortgage means that your payment, your mortgage payment is fixed for a short period of time. So let's just say, for example, a five-year term, and then it becomes variable thereafter. Therefore, it's a much riskier loan product than the 30-year fix, for example. And with that said, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also, please um, leave me a comment below with your thoughts regarding how will Donald Trump help the housing affordability crisis? And also, how will he impact the housing market? I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you. And we'll see you next video.